Hi, I'm Sheila Guillotone, and this is The Simsbury Woman. Today we're exploring a fascinating segment of what is described as folk art with our guest, Vivian Lozich, the owner of So Inspired Quilts. Her shop, which is located in Fiddler's Green, right here in Simsbury, is an amazingly colorful and creative place. The history of quilting is fascinating. Quilts, which are made by stitching together layers of fabric and padding, are thought to date back as far as ancient Egypt. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to explore the complete history of quilting, so we will concentrate today's conversation around quilting in America and the modern application of this craft or art, folk art form. Some of us associate quilts in America with colonial times, and I mistakenly thought that every family had a quilt but quilts of the late 18th and early 19th centuries were actually the domain of the wealthy as they had the leisure time to engage in this activity. Most families used commercial blankets as the most economical bed covering. A quilt was not made from leftover scraps of worn fabric, but was actually highly decorative pieces which displayed the art of fine needlework. The history of quilting can be the history of the country. But I'm not the one to explain the many facets of quilting, so please welcome my guest, an expert in this art. Welcome, Viv. Thank you. Okay, one of the things that I'd like to talk about immediately is how you got into quilting and then what the trends are um, in the United States today, sure. because we'll concentrate on America and leave the rest of the world for okay. another day. <laughs> Well, Sheila, I've been quilting um, oh, well over 30 years now. I've been sewing since junior high school, and um, I became interested in quilting through some magazines that I was exposed to, but also through my mother and grandmother. They were both um, seamstresses and quilters before me, so um, certainly I am now the third generation. And um, it was a very serious hobby for me and I decided to turn that hobby and that passion into a business back in 2004 when I opened So Inspired. Um, I have the opportunity to see what's going on in the industry today and I've watched it over several years as a shop owner uh, as well as a quilter by attending a very large convention in Houston every fall. It's interesting, I'd never really considered this being an industry, and yet it's apparently huge. It's a huge industry. The 2017 survey results, which we received in Houston this year, show that the industry, it's about $3.7 billion. And when you think of the um, number of quilters between six and eight million in the United States, it it really um, tells you how, how popular it is as far as how many households actually have a quilter or know a quilter. Um, some other interesting statistics from the survey is uh, that the average age of the quilter is declining. So um, it's not, we, we joke about this is not your grandmother's quilt, uh -huh. um, but you know, sometimes people will associate quilting with um, you know, a very old craft, a colonial type of a thing, That's and might not I consider thought. that it could yeah. be very modern. Huh. Okay, you said you have conventions? Yes, so we attend, a, <laughs> we attend a trade show and it actually precedes a very large quilt show. It's the International Quilt Festival attended by thousands of consumers where they see hundreds of quilts on display in several categories. Handmade quilts, um, art quilts, art quilts are a big segment of that uh, exhibition. Uh, I attend it prior to that to, uh, to buy for the shop. Mm -hmm. I'm purchasing fabric, well, between six and eight months out. So I'm already looking at Christmas oh. fabric for 2018 now. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So both consumers and retailers. And retailers. Um, shop owners like myself will okay. attend conventions like this to, to kind of keep up with the trends to see what's new from a, a tools perspective mm -hmm. and um, certainly what's new from a trend perspective as well. Okay. We were talking earlier about um, a method of quilting, a broidery purse, which dates back um, hundreds of years, but is also somewhat apparent in some of the quilts today that are starting to look a little bit more collage-like. Okay. Yeah, I had done a really quick research project and discovered 
quilting on Wikipedia is just pages and pages and pages. Um, and I knew virtually nothing about anything except I kind of knew there were colonial quilts. But let's talk about what you do in okay. your shop because sure. you have a variety of things that you do primarily classes, which sound really, really interesting. Um, let's talk about the, you have at least four that um, I remember. Let's mm -hmm. talk about those and okay. what each one does and who they're appropriate for sure. and when you have them. Okay. Uh, so why don't we start with uh, the HQ Ruler of the Month? So we're a handy quilter dealer. A, hand, a handy quilter produces long arm quilting machines. Okay, what's a long arm quilting machine? That so for those who are not familiar, them. right? Uh, a long arm quilting machine is a very large machine that is um, on a table or a frame that's used to actually do the quilting. So for the quilting, you have an unfinished top like this one, for example. So it starts out as a bundle of fabric. It gets pieced into a top. So this is just a small baby quilt and you can see it uh -huh. hasn't been finished yet. So it okay. needs to be finished. Okay. So it will be mounted onto a machine layered with batting and the backing and the machine will do the stitching. That can now, be- Now is it that stitching though, has that been done by machine or was- Oh yes, someone? no, this, okay. was, this was machine pieced. Okay, but mm -hmm. someone could do it by hand. Because they, they could, they could. There is hand- Quilting and machine yes, quilting. Yes, okay. there is. And I'll talk a little bit about the hand work and the hand piecing when we talk about our Inspired Hands Club. Okay, okay. So this is going to get mounted on the long arm machine. Okay. And people who own these machines can do the quilting themselves freehand, or you can actually program a computer to stitch it out for you, which is how we finish most of the samples in our shop because we need to make them so quickly. Oh, okay. So it seems to me, if I recall my home economics, which was light years ago, Singer sewing machines and sewing machines, you could program to do various things. So that's kind of certainly the mm -hmm. same thing. So you program the machine to- And it will, it to, will do the stitching. And Correct. it will do the stitching. Okay. Um, so, did we finish HQ Ruler of the Month? Oh, okay. So we talked about the handy quilters. Right. We um, uh, digressed a little bit there, but the handy quilter Ruler of the Month is a club that's appropriate for someone who's interested in machine quilting and using rulers to do that. Um, essentially, you're placing a template on top of the quilt and using it to guide the stitching that you're doing. We meet once a month. Um, it's appropriate for anyone that's interested in machine quilting and we'll be starting it again in January. Okay. Um, it's a six month club and, um, and we welcome all machine quilters. And, and when is it? It's on the third Thursday of the month okay. at two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, okay. So you, do, you have to sign up for it? Yes. Okay. We actually have a open studio affair, if you mm -hmm. will, coming up this Saturday, December 16th. Okay. We're going to be in our studio, which is in the lower level of Fiddler's mm -hmm. Green. Uh, with some tables set up that will have information about all of the clubs that are available in 2018, including the Ruler of the Month. Okay. So people can stop in. They can look at some samples of things that we do in the club. They can pick up flyers of information. They can sign up and register for um, you know those classes or clubs there. Okay. Is there a cost to joining a class or a club? It depends on the class or the club. Um, something like our Learn to Quilt class, which mm -hmm. is... Um, starting up January. This is this is actually an advanced beginner class that we are um, starting in early January. It's a six-week course. Mm -hmm. So over, um, aside from the course fee, of course, there's the cost of the materials. Mm -hmm. And um, people come once a week for a few hours to learn how to assemble the various blocks. This one presumes that you've had some experience. Okay. Um, that you can cut and that you can thread your machine and <laughs> okay. sew a relatively straight line. Okay. But we do have a true beginner course starting in mid-February that's eight weeks long and you'll actually leave with a finished quilt. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds It'll take like you from start to finish. People would definitely enjoy that. So that we'll um, have this on display and you can find out more about that on okay. Saturday too. Great. Um, all right. 
the 2018 Saturday Sampler. Sure. Saturday What's Sampler that, is a fun program where it's more a community of quilters where we come together, we share the projects that we're working on, and we build a quilt over the course of the year. So this next one, we're actually using this program, Inspiring Stitches. Okay. It's a desk calendar, but there's a quilt. So each month, there are patterns to make various quilt blocks. So we'll be going through and making these blocks January, February, March, and every second Saturday of the month, you can come at 10 o'clock in the morning, sit through a demonstration and a lecture, earn some free fabric for the next month's block, okay. um, and earn some prizes and uh, all kinds of fun things. So when you say you're going to be making that, what are you doing? I mean, are you actually sewing them or? Uh, not in the context of or? the club. Okay. What, we, what we will have sewn the blocks ahead of time ah. and we'll show you the blocks, how okay. it's going to look. You'll go home, make okay. them, return the following month with your block. Okay. And, um, and then you'll receive the next one. Oh, okay. So everyone is actually working on their own. It's not like a community, everybody's No, everyone's to producing the... their own quilt. Okay. Correct, correct. Okay. So very similar to a block of the month program. I think you had asked about yeah, that, that as well. Yeah, I do have block of the month mm -hmm. that down is something we should talk about, okay. which is what? We run several <laughs> of blocks them. blocks right there. Sure, I have an example of how a block of the month starts. There are three beginning in 2018, January, February, March, and then we'll start some more in the spring and summertime. This one here, one of my favorites, this begins in February. It's called Bristle Creek Farms. Okay. It's a very traditional quilt. Uh, a large quilt, it's a 95 inches square, and these are smaller blocks. So what happens with a block of the month is you sign up you register to participate, and we cut your block kits for you. Okay. So it's a way of making that quilt one bit at a time mm. so that it's not so overwhelming. So, for example, this is the package of fabric that you'll receive in month one. You'll go home, make those blocks. You'll come back in February. We'll give you your next package. You'll make some more blocks. At the end of the year, you'll have you that have quilt, quilt. Oh, That's how that works. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, this sounds like fun. I have no idea what it means, but what is the Cut Loose Club? Cut Loose. So we'd like to think that we, um, we're not just a quilt shop because many of our customers are interested in sewing. They consider themselves sewists right. and not quilters. Oh, okay. And uh, they use a lot of <laughs> the same fabrics, the same tools. Um, but we focus that club on smaller sewing projects. Uh, I brought an example of one. Okay. This is... Um, this is a notebook cover. Oh. Okay, something. So it's not a full quilt, but you get to make a few blocks. Uh huh. And in that club, I would demonstrate how to make those blocks. There's a number of specialty tools and rulers on the market that okay. allow you to make these things very accurately, very easily. And I will feature a pattern, a cut loose pattern, every month. You come, you receive the pattern. I'll show you how to make the project. You come back the next month with the finished one. We have a little bit of show and tell. We have punch cards. We have prizes. So these are more table runners, um, pillows, uh, bags. We, we do a lot of um, tote bags, things like that. They're not quilts, mm. but they're sewing projects. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. I would never have guessed that that was what that meant. Um, okay. You have another one called Inspired Hands. Inspired uh, Hands. Which sounds... Uh, very difficult. Well, uh, we do have a number of customers that like to do handwork. So it's not all machine work in quilting. Uh, we have a group of women that like to do wool applique embellished with embroidery stitches. Oh, so wow. this is an example of one of those that we have kits for in the shop. So this is wool and cotton and stitching and it's all done by hand. There's no machine work except for putting on the, the wow. finishing binding. Something like this pin cushion here. This is also wool applique. So this is a group that meets every first Thursday morning and starting in 2018, we're gonna incorporate a potluck lunch into that. We'll do some soups and salads and we'll sit and we'll stitch as a group. So we'll work on embroidery, on wool applique, on traditional applique, English paper piecing, which is a hand quilting method with paper templates. Um, so any kind of handwork. So if you're interested in handwork, that would be the club for you. Uh, no. 
<laughs> no talent whatsoever. Put I hear it all the time. I can't thread a needle. <laughs> I can't. No, I truly can't. Um, when I was uh, taking home ec, if my bobbin ran out on the sewing machine, that was as far as my projects ever got because I never learned to refill the bobbin. So that definitely was not me. Um, there was something that did intrigue me on your website. And by the way, just for our viewers to know, um, So Inspired, which I love the name, by the Thank way, um, does have a really good website. So if you want to learn more about the clubs and the times and everything to do mm -hmm. with them, I would suggest, and we will post the website um, on the, the title of this show because it's, it's quite good and it does give you a fair amount of information. It also talked about something called a Border Creek Station Mystery, Mystery Quilt. A Mystery Quilt What Club. is that? <laughs> so it's a quilt that you're doing a little bit at a time, once a month coming in and picking up a clue. And much like a block of the month, going home and sewing what that clue tells you to sew. So who's, you know, who's making up the clues. So this is a company, Border Creek Station, that I purchased a program from. She's a oh. gal, a Canadian gal. Okay. And she's done this quilt. She shows it to shop owners when they attend quilt market, like okay. what I told you about in Houston. I look at the program. I purchase the program for my shop, and I promote it to my customers, and they sign up. So they know they're making a quilt but they don't know what it looks like. They just have to trust me. Really? They'll see the fabric choice ahead of time, so they'll know if they like the fabric. And we've been doing this a number of years, and they've been very happy with the quilt, so they trust us. Really? And they pick up their clues, and after about eight months or so, when they start to assemble it, they get a good idea of what that quilt is going to look like when it's done. Oh, that's interesting. And that, yeah, I can't even imagine. So you have no idea what you're working on. You just know you're it's given, going to be a quilt. It's going mm -hmm. to be a quilt and you get the pieces that are going to go into it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, I noticed you also have classes for kids um, and you talked about the fact that the quilters are getting younger. So they it are. seems to me dragging the children away from their <laughs> iPhones and iPads um, is a good thing. Uh, so how, is, how does it work we get, with the kids? We do get some younger um, people in the shop. I think that one of the things that um, I was most excited about when they did the survey is they're starting to concentrate on a younger segment of the market, um, women who are 45 years old and younger, and starting to really track, um, track that. We get a lot of um, young adults who are interested in doing home deck projects mm. that want to make bags. Um, that's a very popular thing for, for that group. And also clothing. So we're starting to add more clothing fabric to our shop. Um, we are carrying knits now. So we have classes that address how to work with knits. Those will be, again, in the February-March time frame. We have a woman coming uh, to teach a class in working with knits and making a t-shirt. Um, it is... Okay, knits. I, I think in terms of knitting a sweater... When you're talking about knit, jersey knit fabric, okay. no All jersey right. knit fabric like the shirt that you're wearing. Oh, okay, knit fabric. Got so it. we're okay. we're carrying um, a lot of different uh, like lawns and voiles and rayons and denims and things that you wouldn't necessarily think would go into a quilt. But again, we have people interested in sewing garments and bags and and other things. Mm. I can imagine people applicating the back pocket of their jeans. That's probably <laughs> something um, you know, younger, slimmer women would probably... Um, probably Embellishing, yes. <laughs> yes, probably like to do. Um, we talked a little bit about the machines, and mm -hmm. but give us um, a better idea of the difference between hand quilting and sure. machine quilting. Okay. Um, and historically... I think I read uh, machines came in around the 1840s, 1850s, but before then, of course, everything would hand. have been done by hand. Um, so what's the difference, and is there a more popular style these days, or is it just personal preference? A lot of it is personal preference. Um, I was a hand quilter. When I first started quilting, I hand, I machine pieced the tops, mm -hmm. but I 
finished them with hand quilting okay. and uh, did a number of them that way for years. Once I opened the shop, my time was fairly limited and I turned to machine quilting so that I could complete them much quicker. Uh, queen size top that I hand quilted, uh, it took me a year. Mm. And I would work on it maybe a little bit every night or every other night, and um, it took a long time. That same queen size top, I can mount on a quilting machine and have that quilted in under six hours. So oh. there's certainly a time element. Okay, so that's the difference between doing it by hand and doing it by sure. machine. Sure. And that's a huge difference. It is a big difference. Um, so it is personal preference. Uh, we have a lot of customers who like to piece the tops, but they don't like to do the quilting part. Mm. Um, they don't have the time or the patience to do the hand quilting, and they don't have the time to develop the skill to do the machine quilting. So they hire it out to a long arm quilter. Oh. So there are women out there that own those long arm machines mm -hmm. that do quilts for hire. So oh. you give them the top. So you make the pieces. Exactly. And they finish it. You'll put the binding on. And, uh, but we have a lot of customers who want to finish the entire thing themselves. Mm -hmm. So they will, we do have a few that do hand quilting. Some will still tie their quilts. That, that could be a method of completing it where you're just tying together the layers. Mm. And uh, some will do machine quilting. They'll do it uh, on their regular domestic sewing machines or on these large machines. Mm -hmm. we, um, we sell quite a few of those. And we sell them to people who use them personally, but who also use them as a business to finish mm. quilts for other people. Okay, okay, interesting. Now, historically, one does think in terms of quilting bees. I have no idea what that means. I just know I've read about it in every Victorian novel I've ever read. Um, I mean, historically, quilts have also been associated with um, events that are important. Mm -hmm. The abolitionists, for instance, um, mm -hmm. springs to mind immediately, but I also was not aware until I was researching this that more modern things like the HIV epidemic right. brought out a lot of quilters. And now, how, how do they become part of a movement? So there's a lot of communities within the quilting world. I'm thinking as you're, you're talking about the many groups that come together that do charitable quilts, that make quilts to donate to organizations. There are a few that we support at So Inspired, mm -hmm. uh, Quilts to Heal and Quilts Beyond Borders. This is a community of women who have decided they're going to produce quilts that will be sent to children in other countries who are in need or to uh, victims of catastrophic events and so it's a very caring mm. community so when I think of bees and I think mm. of those <laughs> those groups right. I think of I communities of that little old ladies in sure yes sitting around a table it's also. it's <laughs> women coming together because they share a common um passion and they share and that yes exactly the interest in the craft as well as in using it to to help other people. Okay. So there's a lot of charitable groups too. Okay. And what about you know, this, you know, cancer, AIDS? You no, know, does that start in hospitals? Is it done by, and, and is it used as a fundraiser? I mean, how does that it, actually it fit It can in? be. Um, one of the, again, an organization that we support is um, Cases for Smiles. Uh, and we have people who make pillowcases that are delivered to um, people, young people with illnesses or injuries in hospitals around the state. So they have a, a friendly pillowcase. So huh. um, women are making pillowcases, dropping them off. They're getting distributed to hospitals. So some of those groups do start that way. Mm -hmm. um, parents who have been through events like that will start an organization, which is the case um, with the pillowcase uh, okay. organization. Cases for Smiles is okay. the name of it. Um, so that's, that's another cause. Okay. I noticed there was also um, a very interesting um, usage of, like for a family reunion, mm -hmm. and you would have the family crest in the middle, or the family name if they don't have a crest, and then around you would have as 
part of the blocks, I guess, you would have all the individual family members. Photos like or pictures. like a family tree, yeah. Sure, that's a very common thing. A couple of memorabilia quilts, let's call them memorabilia okay. quilts. Um, we see people who do quilts for weddings that incorporate signatures of all of the guests, people who do quilts with photographs of family members. You can actually print photos onto fabric. I was going to ask you, how do you do that? Oh, certainly. Sure, you can run a piece of fabric through your inkjet printer. We actually sell a particular product just for that use, and people will print that fabric, and they'll cut out those pictures and frame them, so that would be another type. Okay. Another very popular memorabilia quilt is t-shirt quilts. Okay, I have no idea. I, so I you not even imagine what that looks like. So it looks like a collection of t-shirts that you've desired, decided to preserve in the form of a quilt. So people will take uh, t-shirts from their children's uh, grammar school or high school years and turn them into quilts that they then send off to college. You know, we see a lot of first-time quilters or people who want to start quilting because a major event like that is occurring in their lives. Okay. Most women that come in that have decided they want to learn to quilt are making a quilt for a new baby. Oh, of course. A new baby. That makes sense. Sure. Yes. It's a small, simple thing. It's a great way to get started, and they want to give something that they've made with love to a new mother, whether it's their own grandchild mm -hmm. or somebody else's. Um, and so we see a lot of that. Uh, a lot of people come in who are making quilts for their kids to take off to college. I myself am actually working on a wedding quilt now for one of my sons who's getting married in a few weeks. Oh, that's interesting. Now, you use, do you use a quilt like a blanket? I mean, sure. Or, I mean, I've only seen them on the beds, you know, sort of as decoration, but you act, I mean, are they warm? I sleep on them. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are. I sleep under a quilt. Um, it's a very traditional quilt. Actually, it was one that we made in our Mystery Quilt Club a couple of years ago. I loved the colors. Um, but we have quilts all over our home. For example, they're draped across the backs of sofas. Well, that I've seen. Sure, there's some never hanging on the seen walls. Them as like the primary bed covering. Oh, sure. My daughter has probably six on her bed that really? I've made over the years, and she uses them all. We use the quilts in our house. We do hang some of them. Some of them are more like okay. art pieces. But yep, yeah, they're folded on bookshelves. They're displayed well, before everywhere. Before we have to wrap up, there was one other thing I really wanted to ask you about. A while ago, I don't know how many years, there was a fad called Crazy Quilts. Mm -hmm. what, what were Crazy Quilts? Crazy Quilts were quilts that were stitched together with odds and ends of all kinds of fabrics like velvets and satins and, um, you know, any piece, regular cottons, and then embellished with stitching. We talked about the hand stitching. Mm -hmm. They were embellished with ribbons and buttons and embroidery stitches. And, and as I understand that they weren't like rectangular, they were no, like weird shapes. Hodgepodge of patches, sure. Okay. So this was really just an art it, it was it was a style useful it, it was a style and you see those styles come and go and so crazy quilting enjoyed a resurgence a few years ago in popularity and um, we we see that the things that have been made in the past like yo-yo quilts they come up again wow okay well thank you very very much sure. unfortunately we've run out of time and there is obviously so much more to talk about um, I want to thank Viv for sharing her knowledge and encourage all of our viewers to investigate all of the options that Viv Shop offers. So Inspire's website, as I said, lists many possible classes that are available. And I would especially want to remind all of our viewers interested in pursuing this activity, just to see if it's something you might like, uh, attend So Inspire's Quilt Saturday, December 16th um, event to learn all about the new and exciting plans that So Inspired has uh, for 2018. Thank you all for watching, and I wish our viewers a happy and creative day. Thank you.
Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.